Roger, San Francisco. This is FM3. Holding steady at 15,000 feet. Looks like smooth sky. That was the strongest clear air turbulence I've ever experienced. Tell me I'm seeing things. It's attacking the engine! Mayday, Mayday, this is FM3 declaring emergency. Mayday! Moving altitude! Increase engines to full power! album of our bouncing baby lizard. You know, they grow up so fast. I developed a remote MRI device to take readings of Godzilla's brainwaves. I'm trying to determine if he dreams. <laughs> Look at that. His rapid eye movements are off the chart. been dreaming about you. <gasps> Just what I need. Ah, uh, what error? What's the problem? Whoa, looks like somebody's megabytes are in a bunch. I'm just trying to open my email. Is that too much to ask? The server's been a little buggy this week. Let me take a look at it. No way I can work with you breathing down my neck. And speaking of your breath... Fine, fine. I'm leaving. You've got mail. I am so good it ought to be illegal. Personal and confidential. Hmm. Ah, none of my business. Dear Dr. Craven, I've isolated your virus and have determined it to be fatal. Craven's dying? No. No way. Is it working yet? Uh, yeah. Yeah, no problem, man. It uh, works like a charm. Just ch check, check it out. There you go. There, there's your mail. Flashing. Right there. Ready to read. I can see it, Randy. Thanks. Anytime, pal. Anytime at all. Pack it up, guys. We're headed to the city by the bay. Newark? San Francisco. I knew that. Well, at first all I saw was a shimmering in the sky. And once the bird became visible, it clamped down on our number two engine and put us into a dive. You were attacked by a bird? Affirmative. A, uh... A, a giant hummingbird, I'd say. 
What happened after you took evasive action? Well, the, the thing disappeared. It's possible the bird was a stealth weapon being tested by a hostile force. Doctor, any thoughts? I think we need to check out the not-so-friendly skies for ourselves. Briggs, I want you to take the heat team to the exact airspace where the attack occurred. What's the status of your co-pilot? On leave, Major Hicks. But, uh, Ms. Dupre could take his place. How about it, Monique? Are you ready for a replay? It would be a pleasure. Let's duplicate everything from your earlier flight. Same course, altitude, everything. Understood. Hey, Crave, uh, let me give you a hand with that. There you go, you're all set. Just yell if you need anything else, buddy. Buddy? Video surveillance system now recording. Hefik, very faint readings, 20 degrees to the northwest. Turning 20 degrees. The shimmering, dead ahead. I see no signs of a creature. Captain Briggs, our airspeed is slower than your first flight, increased to 520 knots. Affirmative. Those things usually small and cute and, and non-violent? Thank you! Where is it? Behind us! It's right on us! It's latched onto the engine! Ah! Ah! Number two's out! We're losing altitude! world, huh? You and Briggs. I mean, uh, you guys college buddies? That is classified. Gee, mutant hummingbird spit. I love my job. Whew. Glad you're okay, buddy. The creature appears and disappears at random. Perhaps it utilizes a cloaking device. But why did it attack us? Actually, it didn't really attack. The birds seem more interested in our engine. Those feathers you found in the engine block, they're composed of highly reflective strands, similar to fishing wire. So they reflect light? Basically. It's like the hummingbird's wings are made up of thousands of little mirrors, and when light hits the wings, bounces right off. That kind of glare would be blinding, which would explain why the bird seems to be invisible. But we all saw the thing, at least some of the time. Somehow, we were able to counteract the reflection caused by the wings. Here it is. The bird first appeared as a mirage and only became visible when we increased our airspeed. The creature flaps its wings at a certain speed. When we traveled at the exact same speed, the glare from the creature was neutralized. So, we have to fight something that we can only see if we're going 500 miles an hour? <laughs> oh, that's not gonna be too impossible. Unless we can rig up something to filter out the glare of the creature's wings and make the bird visible at any speed. What about chemical analysis of the regurgitation? 
Still working on it, but I found something else interesting in these feather samples. Microscopic traces of bark from a giant redwood tree. Redwood trees are only found on the Pacific coast. Those particles of bark had to come from this area. It seems strange that the creature would venture so far from an area that is so safe. Something must have driven it out. I'm not an expert on giant hummingbirds, but the little ones insert their beaks into flowers to feed off the nectar. Uh huh. It looked like the mutation that attacked our plane was doing the exact same thing to our engine. Perhaps it was merely disoriented. Maybe. Let's see if we can find signs of a nest. You guys go ahead. I want to take some plant samples. Maybe its food source will tell us something. Ah, uh, it's still no good. Human eyes aren't going to respond to this kind of filtering process. So, humans are out, but what about reptiles? <laughs> Craven, I, I, I... What's wrong? Nothing. I'll talk to Hicks about mobilizing a search team tomorrow. cannot go fast enough to make the bird visible. Chopper 1, this is Apache 1. I do not remember calling for backup. My mistake. It's a whole squadron! Apache 1, bank right! Sometime. And a live specimen. I told you to bank right. Your reflexes are still slow. And you're still arrogant as ever. It's comforting. Run that by me one more time. Slowly. When the bird's wings aren't moving, they can't reflect the light, so the creature is visible to us. Nick, this blood sample, it's full of chlorofluorocarbons. Toxins caused by heavy pollution. And the same CFCs show up in the flower samples I took from the forest, as well as in that brown stuff big birds spit at us. Industrial pollution must have contaminated the plants that these birds feed on and caused the mutation. How does that explain the attacks on our aircraft? The hummingbirds want the engine emissions. They've probably become dependent on the toxins. Maybe their food supply is running low, and the colony had to find another source of CFCs. Airplanes aren't the only producers of chlorofluorocarbons. These mutants might start attacking cars, uh, factories, anything that produces fumes. Major Hicks, do you read? Go ahead, Corporal. San Francisco airport radar just picked up something strange. Headed for the city. <laughs> Randy, you don't think we should have adjusted the lens an additional five degrees? No way, dude. It's perfect. Maybe you should sit down for a while. You know, uh, get some rest. I'm not tired! The birds are making a move, guys. Tell me you have something. Ladies and gentlemen? Boys and girls, we're a little short on time. Developing a device to accommodate the human eye proved impossible. However, we feel we created the next best thing. Introducing the first Godzilla visor. A pair of overgrown sunglasses? 
perhaps to the simple-minded, but to men of science. An impact-resistant plexiglass base, layered with light-filtering tints designed to counteract varying degrees of image refraction. And we added an infrared sensor for insurance. Gentlemen, in English. Thereby making the birds visible to Godzilla. Just one question. How do we get them to wear it? Rig me a chopper. What do you mean you don't have authorization? The airport has to be shut down now. Hello? Hello? Ah, they put me on hold. What's the word? Ignorance. Evidently, the FAA is not accepting the Pentagon's recommendation to close the airport. Not enough immediate threat. Pencil next wouldn't know a threat if it bit him. Call Godzilla. Degrees to the right. Steady, big guy! In range and in position. Missing visor. Incoming! Now! Scattering. No way the G-Man can get them all before they reach the city. We have to round them up, make them come back together again. Why don't we offer them a little bait? Why don't I like the sound of that? If I can increase fuel compression and disengage the exhaust valve controls, we can increase our emissions and lure the birds towards us. But if we do that, those overgrown parakeets will think we're a free lunch. Exactly. Do, do it. the airport when this is over some FAA officials gonna be pumping gas for a living was a success. I wish I could have been there. Another time, perhaps. Hmm. Perhaps. Uh, you and Briggs, we're talking a working relationship, right? The Coast Guard's finished rounding up the hummingbirds. None were fatally injured, just stunned. The Pentagon wants to study their stealth capabilities. Today a bird, tomorrow a spy plane. They want to talk to you two about that visor. Actually, Craven deserves all the credit. It was his design. Huh? Okay, that's it. I've had enough of this. What are you up to? What are you talking about? Knock it off! You've been driving me insane with this be nice to Craven routine. There's something going on here and I want to know what it is. Okay, okay. 
I know. Know what? <sighs> about the virus. I sort of read the email from your doctor about it being fatal. And I just want to let you know that I, I am here for you, buddy. Whatever you want to do. However long you have left. Randy! That email was about an Egyptian mummy I've been autopsying for Elsie. I don't have a virus. You're not dying. So, I was nice to you for nothing? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, hey, Craven, wait up! You wanna, you wanna get a burger or something? Sure, okay. <laughs> Thank you.